So welcome everyone. This is business as usual. I have no idea what day today is, but I think it's definitely not Saturday. It's definitely not Sunday. And it's another day of us um, bringing you some amazing conversations and some people. And today is another big opportunity for us to be, shine the light on Pittsburgh and some really cool things. But before I introduce our guest, I wanna thank Huntington Bank for being our partner for so long and believing in our work and standing by the community in terms of the pandemic and making sure that people get the tools they need to survive the pandemic and thrive moving forward. So I also wanted to uh, extend appreciation for the nonprofit that's part of the Pittsburgh Technology Council called 40 by 80. That's the longitude and latitude of Pittsburgh. And it's the 501c3 affiliate of the Pittsburgh Tech Council that's leading many of our efforts to support entrepreneurship and workforce development, which is very timely in terms of today's topics. Uh, we've muted your microphones. Uh, we won't, don't wanna hear anything in the background. We wanna be considerate of our guests and we do have a chat. Jonathan's gonna keep his eyes open on that. This is not an opportunity for you to sell your wares, but this is an opportunity for you to engage with our guest who I will bring up in one moment. I believe that there is a QR code that's actually on the screen that if you want to uh, link, you can link to our speaker in LinkedIn using the QR code. And uh, now I'm gonna bring on Phil Hahn. He's the deputy director of AFWorks, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. And uh, you'll see the link. We'll put the link out to his website as we're talking. And he is deputy director of this organization. And we're very, which is really the forward looking, forward thinking, forward doing in innovation within the Air Force. And uh, hopefully I, I captured that correctly, Phil, but uh, that's my extraction from looking around and noodling around at your work. So I wanna bring to the forefront and welcome Phil Hahn. Thank you so much for being here today and taking the time to join us and hope that you're safe and sound. And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. How are you doing? How are, what's your role? How did you get to what you're doing? And, just sort of set the table so that we can have a conversation with you. Sure, sure, Audrey. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Thanks for everyone that's that's here. Hopefully, uh, everyone is uh, is safe and sound out there, uh, given given the landscape uh, that we're in. So, a little bit about me. Um, originally from the Pittsburgh area, uh, so grew up in uh, Ford City, Pennsylvania. So just uh, just north up in Armstrong County. Um, uh, went into the military, uh, uh, but first went to a school. Uh, did a uh, degree in electrical engineering. Uh, first duty station was out in California where I was doing uh, uh, test and development, research and development. Uh, started out with data links, uh, quickly moved to uh, materials and stealth technology. Uh, from there, transitioned out to uh, the Las Vegas area where I was a uh, mission director for a lot of the uh, both stealth and advanced programs that uh, that the Air Force and our DOD partners had. Um, along the way, got a um, master's in systems engineering uh, and was also a flight test engineer. So I, uh, I spent some time uh, backseat F-16s, uh, HH-60s, so uh, the Blackhawks, and then also uh, some, some funky uh, <laughs> test aircraft that have a bunch of widgets on them that uh, that uh, it, it was a lot of fun to get out there and fly. But again, my primary mission um, out there was to uh, uh, be kind of the mission director, the conductor per se, of uh, developing a lot of the high risk um, test programs that, that, we, that we had in the DOD. Um, and some of our partner and ally, um, allied partners as well. So I worked with uh, a little bit with the Brits and uh, the Aussies and, and the Canadians as well uh, on a couple programs. So that, that was a lot of fun. Uh, amazing opportunities, uh, a lot of breath. If you've ever worked with like a red flag, um, I've, I've done a lot of those as well. Um, so from there, transitioned out to Hanscom uh, Air Force Base, which is in, in the Boston area. Uh, did IT tests and IT program management uh, for some of our classified systems uh, for, the, uh, for the Air Force. Uh, kind of wanted to do something a little bit more entrepreneurial. Um, I, I, I tell a lot of the folks that, that I work with currently, uh, if, if some of these opportunities would have been here when I was still active duty, um, I, I might not have uh, got out of the military, got out of active duty. 
Um, but I did and, uh, and landed back here in Pittsburgh uh, at Carnegie Mellon, uh, the Tupper School. So I uh, went, uh, went, went and did my, uh, my MBA. I had an amazing, amazing time there. Uh, met a lot of very interesting people. I uh, got my feet wet with you know, both the entrepreneurship space as well as um, had some time out in, uh, in China and Hong Kong to understand that ecosystem um, and how that works. Um, that was very, that was a very interesting experience for me, being uh, being that a lot of the programs that I that I that I developed, uh, you know, China's being one of our uh, adversaries from a from a tech uh, technology standpoint. I can get into that a little bit later um, of how that affected the um, the, the current work, but uh, then got into uh, uh, private equity a little bit. There was an entrepreneurship through acquisition track uh, at CMU that I did where we were. Uh, I took the next couple of years uh, working with uh, generational uh, transfer entrepreneurs, uh, where we uh, go through and uh, purchase small businesses to uh, to buy and and, and to run. Uh, so COVID hit. Then uh, that that was kind of a good time uh, where things were slowing down. There was a lot of uncertainty in the markets, um, and AFWorks was was coming on board. Uh, so I uh, I quickly kind of stepped into my my other hat, uh, which is in the military realm. Uh, so I'm, I'm currently the commander of the uh, comm and uh, cyber squadron here at the 9-11th in Pittsburgh. Um, and, and so there was a COVID effort that was going on, uh, signed up and, and worked along with them uh, with, with the COVID efforts that we were doing. And then AFWorks came along. It, it's, a, it's, a weird, uh, it's a weird space that, that just was developed. It started in 2017, but uh, a bunch of grassroots innovation efforts all combined in, into one um, here in the last several months. And so I've been working with our, uh, our commander, um, Nate Diller, uh, Colonel Nate Diller, uh, and we've really been developing the, uh, developing the, the, uh, the AFWorks, uh, both the network and the, <laughs> and the organization uh, from the ground up. Well, it's exciting. I mean, we put the site out there so everyone could, should be able to toggle and look at that site, if not now, while you're talking later for sure. Thank you so much for your service to our country and uh, the work that you've done. This is pretty exciting where you are right now. And I believe you're a native um, Southwestern Pennsylvania guy. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, that's correct. Yep. Born, born and raised. So it's, uh, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely great to be back, um, back in the area. Um, AFWorks as a whole has a lot of uh, interesting technologies that we can bring. Um, started off as a, Back, like I said, back in 2017, as a grassroots innovation effort from the secretary, um, secretary of the Air Force. Uh, so we're comprised of three divisions, and this is where I said there are three individual efforts that have come together. Uh, so there's, you know, how are we going to address the industrial base uh, with with different acquisition products that that we currently have? So what uh, does so, that mean? What does that mean, industrial base? So. So I, I guess for, first off, let, let me break down the three right. area, the three areas. Um, so the first is uh, is called Spark, and th this is our Airman Empowerment Division. Uh, this is the innovation grassroots effort of the military that says, you know, where are the problems? Uh, the whole way down to the airman that's turning the wrenches. What are the problems that you have, and and how how can we bring the network together to to solve some of those problems? Um, so from that grassroots effort came AF Ventures, which uh, has, has really uh, grabbed, grabbed a hold of, of the tech ecosystem in, across the US. Uh, SBIRs and STTRs, uh, Small Business Innovative Research and the uh, Science Technology Transfer. Uh, it's about a, a billion dollar portfolio that, uh, that comes down from Congress in, in, uh, in support of uh, these efforts, um, and Audrey, I, I know you have you had some prior experience with right. those uh, with those, and and so what this does is it provides the government a way uh, to really really help in the in the small business uh, in the small business arena with some of these technologies, um, and and so in our event next week uh, there'll be a lot more information on it, um, but. Primarily, right now, it's the management of that portfolio that we are that we are working on from the AF Ventures division, um, and then finally is the Prime division. And so this is the uh, this is really the capability development arm of uh, 
non-traditional capability development arms. So, so normally when a program is made, there's, you know, there's, there's the requirement generation and it takes years upon years upon years to get an actual capability developed, get the technology uh, put through the process. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, through Congress with, with the uh, funding and, and all of that. So what this does is this really expedites that, that process. Um, Dr. Will, uh, Will Roper, uh, he, he, he kind of was the visionary of this. Uh, he looked at the, the small UAS market, so the, the drone market, um, and you can't buy anything without it being from China. So how do we, how do we hedge, hedge that? How do we, how do we build the, uh, the US ecosystem, the US industrial base to, to combat some of those, some of those things that'll just be sucked up by China in the future as far as technology, because it's, we're all we're all fighting for the same uh, the same technologies, the same um, knowledge base across the board. So so how do we as an organization, how do we as the Air Force and the DoD move at the at the speed of commercial when when we're still in a you know a democratic society and we're not having um, you know the government just say this is the technology that we're going to do and and with the efforts behind it. So. This is, this is a, a, a soft answer to what that is, and, and we're continuing to develop the organization as such. If you back up, you mentioned something about next week, that I, and I saw that on your website, that you have, an, you have a, a virtual event next week. Tell us about that. Sure, and, sure. And who so, should attend that? Uh, so everyone should attend it. Everyone should attend everyone it. Everyone in the whole world should attend it? Everyone okay. in the whole, except for probably people in China that we, we, we don't necessarily want them there. But, um, <laughs> Yeah. No, I, yeah. Anyway, so the the event next week, um, it's it's basically a summary of of AFWorks 2.0. It's it's this is who we were, this is who we are now, and this is where we're going as an organization. These are some of the efforts that we're going to be uh, going towards in uh, in 2021. Uh, the 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 first the first one of the prime events. So so as I said, we have we have a division called Prime. Uh, Agility Prime is is our is Dr. Will Roper's answer to to the what is the next industrial base that we need to look at as far as a, a technology perspective. So this is if you go to agilityprime.com, this is the the flying orbs, the flying cars, um, and it's really us partnering with the U.S. industrial base. Uh, we have 17 companies we currently um, are working with and and creating a, a fly off event uh, where we're partnering with them from the uh, you know, from the onset, and we're buying down risk and helping them uh, establish themselves as a company while we're developing military utility and dual use technology for that. So it's, it's really a partnership to help push the technology base forward. So we're helping all of these companies um, in, in one way or another through, through several contract vehicles um, and everything from airworthiness to helping with certain labs and ranges. Um, that, is a, that is a large effort that we're doing that. So next week, we're gonna be announcing some topic areas of what some of the next primes could be. Okay. Um, and, and then also some, some interesting new uh, financial products that our App Ventures uh, team was, was also, uh, also has been working on. Um, we have a, a federal loan program that we're, that we're looking to start up where we can start to uh, start to use some of these debt and equity offerings instead of instead of just the uh, the SBIR and STTR um, yeah. aspects of the funding. They're they're very competitive uh, the SBIRs, but they're some of the best tools that have been out and helped our ecosystem just even around the U.S. And I think I don't know how we're doing in southwestern Pennsylvania right now, but we usually track it in terms of our engagement in SBIRs. NSTTIRs. Um, let, let's talk about a little bit about, so everyone has the information out there about the, the um, conference next week, and it sounds like it'll be definitely very informative and, and uh, no one should underestimate their relevance in terms of the products or services that they're working on. Cause it sounds like the world is your oyster in terms of what you're looking for, which is really cool. The, you have, but then you also have a challenge program there. Yes. Yes. So there's 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 challenge programs that go along the way. Um, so so the the challenge programs you can think of them as almost like mini prime efforts. 
So, uh, and this really comes from that grassroots innovation uh, effort that I spoke with, with our sport okay. division. So in the, uh, uh, the next generation helmet was one of our challenges. Uh, Base of the future was one of our challenge events. Um, and, and that is, you know, things that happen. And so Tyndall Air Force Base um, was, was damaged by the hurricane. Uh, we, we lost a lot there. So, so it was, uh, that was kind of a grassroots effort of what can the next base of the future look like and, and how can we, uh, how can we help in an innovative way to, to solve some of these problems. Uh, you, you look at things like the, the pilot helmet, which hasn't changed in, I think like 60, 60 years or so where they're pulling all of these G's. So how do we, how do we open, open topic? How, how do we how do open source um, solution sets to these problems? You, you look at the, the, uh, 80% of the uh, technology and, and innovation in the, uh, in the country used to come from, you know, the areas where in you know, DARPA and, and the Air Force Research Lab and, and the government. And it used to be, that's where all the innovation and technology was coming out of. Uh, you know, due to advancements in technologies, you, you know, you can now get on your cell phone the, the processing capability that used to be in a whole room back, you know, 60 years ago. So there's been a big change in that market. And this is how we're trying to address that big change is, is we're, we're trying to partner with these, um, with these companies that can be faster and more agile than, than, than we can be as the, as the government. And so part of the SBI process is, is involving that. And, and the way that our AF Ventures team has shifted the paradigm in, um, in, in how SBIRs are, are both looked at and sourced is, is really what the game changer was yes. for, for the product. Mm -hmm. So, um, hang on, for some reason you got viewed there. Look, so it's, I think that the most important thing that I really want people to get out of this, I mean, there's a lot, obviously the resources, your website is really robust. There's lots of interesting things going on, but the world is in terms of the problems and products that people are working on right now have huge applicability and people have not, have tended not to see that, you know, they just don't realize that, that those opportunities are there for them. So they're going down a track in terms of, you know, venture equity, et cetera, mm -hmm. and then missing a tremendous amount of assets that are really available and uh, that's what I'm getting excited about in terms of what you're doing, because I can just see the, the resources, the access you started talking about, you know, a, a loan program, you know, things like that, that people are not having at their fingertips, I think is really critical. And it just opens up a lot of doors. No one should be intimidated by this. I think that's the other point that I hope that we get out of this. So don't be intimidated. This is important. There's lots of opportunities. And you may think your idea doesn't have applicability in the military, but it really does, it, you know, might. And, it, and more often than not, it really does. So I think that that's what I get really excited about. I really appreciate having the time to talk about this now. But there's also some fun things going on. So, you know, there, talk about some of the, the fun things that people should talk about. Should we talk about flying cars? Am I going to finally get like a flying car or yeah, so I, I so part of part of really the the push that I, when I started coming back to Pittsburgh was when I went out to Austin, Texas, which is one of our uh, one of our hubs is in Austin, Texas, um, and one of our flying car companies that is down in Austin, Texas had a, a flight demonstration um, for the Secretary of the Air Force, the new uh, the new Chief of Staff of the Air Force, so the new head enlisted, um, or, I'm sorry, the new officer, and then and also the Chief Master Sergeant, the head enlisted. Um, and it was a really exciting time. And I, I met a lot of folks down there and was really able to see what the AFWorks ecosystem and the capabilities that, uh, that were able to come by just having a physical presence there, where you, where you, you had a lot of the, the tech startups and the uh, technology small businesses that were in the, uh, that were in the area that, that really could come and, and have someone to talk to and really make that front door uh, to what we're, what we're doing uh, at AFWorks and, and with the SBIR program a little bit easier to get to. And, and I, can, I can go in really quickly to kind of at a glance how we've changed that paradigm. So it used to be uh, we would have certain releases like, hey, we need something, we need a widget that is going to uh, 
solve the, the base security problem, you know? And so that could be anything from a flying drone, that could be something else. So we've made it even easier than that. Um, we, we've developed a thing called the open topic. And that is, if you, if you have something out there that, that is a technology that you think is relevant for the Air Force, or you think that it's relevant for the military, um, you can apply for a SIPR phase one. And, and so this is kind of our small bets. Um, so it's up to a $50,000 award. Uh, we give out about 1,000 to 1,500 of these per year. Um, and we have a, a triannual solicitation base for that. So these are, I, you know, hey, I have this technology. I'm not sure if it's a- applicable, but it could be. Um, and that's a, I think it's a five page, five, either five or 15 page paper and a, uh, and a small PowerPoint. Um, and and you, you submit that and, uh, and we'll give you $50,000 and three months to find an actual partner in the military uh, that, that'll take that um, and, and work with you to develop that, um, that military utility piece of your technology. Uh, fr- from there, it goes up to about uh, a little bit larger bets, about 1.5 million per award. And this is our phase two. Uh, we give about 300 to 500 of those per year. Um, and then we've also developed what's called a, a, a strategic finance, a StratFi, and that, that goes up to about 15 million. And when you look at some of the other things that we can do with the StratFi, we're looking for investors. We're looking for the private, the private entities as well to help partner with us. So, so how do you work with the Army AI Task Force? Do you work with them? Are there partnerships? Are there examples of any of that that you know about? Yeah, so so the Army AI Task Force, uh, I, I'm, I'm familiar with them here in, in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, we're, we're in talks uh, to possibly establish a hub here um, in Pittsburgh, which again would, would help be that forward face uh, to help, uh, you know, sit, again, it's, it's COVID, but, uh, you know, to sit down and, and talk through some things uh, where Army Futures Command is down in, in Austin, Texas. Um, so, so again, it's really working with the ecosystem in Pittsburgh. It's really working with the ecosystem, uh, you know, across the board um, in in the in the U.S. And so, with some of the advancements and some of our primes that could be coming out uh, in the autonomy in the AI space, you know, we plan to work closely with folks across the board uh, because, again, it goes back to that we're pushing the industrial base forward. We want all players on board to push the technology base forward. So there's a couple of things that I sort of want to just pound through real quickly because there's lots of questions and I know that they can follow up with you, but for next week's um, solicitation, they're asking about, you know, the best way to connect with the appropriate program executive officer. And I also want to give a shout out. And if anyone wants to reach out, we do have Kelly Wylam here who can help as well. She's actually listening on the call. So you're seeing some people fill that are reacting to everything that you're talking about. So you have one person here talking about, you know, the slide deck, app works being fun to work with, <laughs> fun and supportive. How do we get access to a PH1 application? And, you know, what about the applications, you know, the technology that's been developed through the Navy, but would have applicability, you know, across all the defense services. So you're hearing a rash of- Oh yeah, the, the, info, there's a- Which yeah, is exciting. So- yeah, it's, it, it is it is really exciting. And, and that's the reason, you know, why I'm coming back from um, kind of from the private sector back into the public sector to help really launch this, because I do see the power in um, in, in really that that yeah. uh, improving the industrial base. I I mean, w- without without going into, you know, a lot of detail with the time that we have left, I, I would say sit through a lot of uh, so Ventures Day, I believe, is Tuesday of next week. Um, so that'll be very applicable to everyone on this call. And again, it, it is, there's a lot. So the, of the f- matching financing, um, our how 400 million or so uh, that we've put out uh, thus far this year with SBIR, we've had 1.9 billion in private funding that is that has matched this. So it's really that, um, it's really that investment multiplier as well. Cause I mean, anytime you say non-dilutive capital, I mean, right. you know, that, that's going to get, that's going to get everyone right. interested. Yeah. You know, we're, we're helping to buy down risk for some of these technologies. Um, and even some of the stuff that's on the shelf to help, to help continue to move 
at, from a cash flow basis to, to keep these companies alive. It, you look at the technologies in China, um, the, 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 the initial cameras that are all over the place in China was a small business that was on an SPR with, with, uh, with DARPA. Oh. So that they, they kind of, it sat on the shelf because no one had anything to do with it. And then China came and bought the company. So, you know, we're looking at, you know, we're starting to look at, at scenarios like that as well of how can we keep that technology base in, inside the U.S. That's so just so that everyone pay attention to the chat because Kelly Wylam, as I mentioned a moment ago, is here and she is actually putting a link for assistance for SBIR, STTR. She put the link out there. So thank you, Kelly. Thanks for listening in and, you know, being a resource. So and then Brian has put back again the link about next week because we keep coming back to that and it just seems like there's just so much information that'll be available. And uh, then can Philip talk uh, to when AFWRX uh, 2.0 phase two will be awarded? Phase two awards. I'll, I'll have to check with my ventures uh, with the with the ventures team. 20.1. Um, yeah, 20.1. Sorry. 20.1. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to check with the ventures team. I, I know we've uh, we, we've had uh, talks with the with the Cyber Center of Excellence of of how we can do this stuff quicker um, and, and award award everything faster. And I was on calls earlier of how we are going to uh, develop a, a, you know a set schedule of uh, of getting stuff done because that is a big part of you know, the open topic was one part, but the other part is moving at the speed of commercial and, and moving at getting getting the funding um, and getting the stuff awarded to where it is relevant to a, uh, a small business, uh, again, with this partnership, instead of you're just working for the military, which is kind of where, where we're looking at to open that up. And you can go to afworks.com as well. Um, so afworks.com, agilityprime.com, and afworks.af.mil all should have some relevant information um, Afworks.com should right now have a lot of information about our Accelerate event. Um, some of the speakers, um, I, I'm not sure if the schedule has been published or not yet, but uh, again, Tuesday is Ventures. Um, Thursday is Prime, where we're going to uh, where we're going to talk through what some of those big initiatives are, and then you know anyone that that can uh, attend the event on Friday, we're going to have a design workshop to help develop you know, possible prime topics as well. So um, diving into some of that and being part of that here. Um, and, and if we can get something, uh, something as, as a uh, hub or something here in the Pittsburgh area, you know, I'm, I'm pushing that personally just because I, I have a soft spot for Pittsburgh. So we, if there's anything that we can do to be helpful, I think the exciting thing is I'm looking at the chat, Jonathan, I'm looking at the chat and people are helping one another. Yeah, man, it's, it's fantastic. It's really to see awesome. You. Thank you. Thanks, Fraser. Thank you. Ellie, Ellie wants the link about the CSOs as well. So I think there's just a lot of information to share. And I think people really need to understand that this is, you know, a process that is non-dilutive and hugely additive at the onset of the creation of so many companies. And it is, it is a pathway that here in Southwestern Pennsylvania, we should have, you know, we should be taking advantage of the most, I would say the most because of the research and the amount of innovation that that's here as well. So do you think, Phil, that I've, that we've uh, captured most of what you think is important to convey? And are you recording next week? Um, will it be archived? Will you record it or is it only live and you have to attend it? No, no, we'll, we'll, have, uh, we'll have most of the recordings. Um, I think we should have everything recorded, so that'll be good. And I, I yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot to get to with kind of where, where we've been as an organization in, in a half an hour. So I Hopefully, I've done my best with uh, with trying to hit hit the high notes. Um, I'm more than happy to dive in with some other stuff with uh, with some of these folks and answer these questions on the line. Uh, but really, a lot will a lot will be answered um, next week, uh, given given probably most of these questions. Right, because I think you, we've just seen another one, Jonathan. Right from Atasa Alavi. Yes. You know, they're wanting to know about, you know, is it a vertical lift application or any tech, et cetera. And I think those questions will be answered next week, right? Yeah, I mean, so so you have the open topic piece uh, where you can apply for 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 different phases. Uh, and then the, the, the other the other really good part about it is, uh, you know, once you're in the SBR or pipeline, uh, I didn't even talk about this at, at the very end of that, uh, you know, there's the 
you can have a direct uh, direct contract with the government and don't have to compete it. So because you've you've been through the development process, so there's also that that goes into it as well. Um, so Phil, we're yeah. going to stay connected to you. It has been a treat to have you join us today. Thank you for your service to our country and thank you for your passion in doing this work now. It is critical. It is important and it is an option that is that is just. Um, so terrific for, for startups and for companies who have products and services. It's just, you know, it's just a path that we, we need to make stronger. So if there's any way that we can help all of us that are on this call and our team at the Tech Council to help as you, in your search for a hub, that would be just incredible for us here. Just I'm being selfish on behalf of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there's any other ways that you want us to tell stories and talk about this, People are saying, how do we contact Phil or Kelly? Uh, we've put all that information in the chat. If you didn't see it, just reach out to one of us at the Tech Council and we'll be able to give you that information as well. So Phil, as you can see, a bunch of questions, a lot of interest, and people want to stay connected to you and the work that you're doing at AppWork. So really appreciate it. I know we packed a lot in a short period of time, but hopefully this gives you uh, a sense of how excited we are. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks again for having me. Uh, it's great to be here and it's great to connect with the, uh, the technology ecosystem here in the, in the Southwest uh, Pittsburgh area. So. Thank you. All right. Well, stay safe. Jonathan, what's up for tomorrow? Well, tomorrow is Friday, our favorite day of the week. And we have Jeremy Waldrop from the Pittsburgh downtown partnership joining us to talk all about the state of downtown and how we can support it and keep it thriving. And then you have the QR code, Taylor, put the QR code. If you just snap that, you can go right to Phil on LinkedIn and you'll find him there. So hopefully we've given you lots of pathways. Thanks again, Kelly, for joining us today and for the resources that you've shared with the chat. Thank you, Jonathan. And most of all, thank you, Phil Hahn. And, uh, you know, let's, let's uh, get a big shingle here in Pittsburgh all for right. this work. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right. So see everyone tomorrow. Thank you so much. Take care. See you tomorrow.